Okay, so as of this point in the uh, chess game maker tutorial, we have two rows of pieces. Uh, one is white, the other side is white. They're all pawns. Uh, you can't do anything with them, it's nothing exciting. This just, the first video is just a bunch of setup. So now this sounds like a pretty good time to um, go and make that a little more exciting. So, uh, how to make the pieces white and black? Well, you can go and make yourself uh, two sets of pieces, one for white, one for black, but that sounds like a lot of work. You're going to be working with duplicate pieces even when you're trying to like extend them to make them do stuff, you're going to be like having two objects that do exactly the same thing but with different appearances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, self code this. Uh, you could call this being lazy, you could call this um, being efficient. In computer science it's the same thing, but another set of uh, nested for loops this time. And I have that for loop and I'm going to be doing um, uh, the piece, whoa. That's the uh, menu key instead of the alt key. Uh, the piece at position i and j. And I'm going to be giving those a variable called color equals... Um, Alright, so th what this does here, this loop, I don't really explain it, is all the... Uh, you may notice that the board is split into two halves. Um, with one uh, set of pieces being um, indexes 0 and 1 and the other being 6 and 7. And I'm just going to be setting the uh, all the pieces at indexes rows six and seven columns whatever I don't even know what the different of the definition of those things are uh, I probably should um, I'm gonna be making all these pieces out of black so the default I'm gonna go into chess piece to create event is gonna be um default color is gonna be white um this is a little bit more uh, advanced uh, working with the variables and stuff but uh, when the chess pieces are created their default color the color they're set to is gonna be white and then in some cases, if the uh, pieces are in the right position, the color is going to be set to black. So uh, that's to do with like, um, that's a little bit complicated if you don't really know what the order of operation of events within Game Maker is. Oop, my computer just uh, lagged there a moment. I hope it wasn't, um, I hope it doesn't script the recording or anything. Anyway, now that we have that, uh, th those variables, that one variable doesn't really do anything right now. So uh, what I'm going to do, there's a bunch of ways to do this. Uh, this is actually one of the uh, the only thing in my um, in that chess basic engine chess basic thing that I did that requires a game maker standard. But um, draw sprite is that the right one? Yes, that's the right one. So instead of um, having the um, the game draw the sprite itself, uh, I'm going to have a um, I'm going to manually draw it. And it's going to have a one tiny little difference. That will be draw sprite extended uh, image index x y uh, x scales one one. Actually, to be um to be consistent, it's going to be drawn with its own uh, x scale and y scale, which at this point is one. I hope if you uh, follow me this far into the video, you didn't have to hear me say that. Uh, rotation is going to be zero. Nah. Just the sake of being consistent, color. Uh, the color is going to be the color that we assigned earlier, so that's the only thing that's not a default. And the alpha um, on a scale of zero to one, I'm sure you all know what that looks like by now, is um, going to be one. All right. So uh, if you're using Game Maker Light, the color can only be uh, white. You can't blend it with like red or orange or black or anything like that. So uh, if you run the game, uh, now these pieces are black. Uh, what you'll have to do is probably make um. A second set of sprites, and just instead of assigning a color, assign the second set of sprite. Uh, but it's really not that difficult. So, uh, as you saw a moment ago, the um, one side of the board is black and the other is white. This is what I meant by uh, I don't want the scores to be white and black because these uh, would obviously blend in and it wouldn't be very easy to play the game like that. So, um, one side's black, one side's white, but they're still all pawns. So that's the other, the main thing I'm going to be dealing with in this specific video. So uh, you have a chess piece. That's your basic chess piece. It does stuff. Um, it has a bunch of properties that are consistent for all chess pieces, like the color and the location and all that fun stuff. What I'm going to be doing, I don't know how many people are familiar with this. It's not one of the more obvious things to do in Game Maker. Oops. Um, going to be creating an object called a pawn and setting a sprite to that. And down here in the parent thing, Instead of no parents, select chess piece. So, uh, if I'm going to just go into the board, instead of telling the uh, game to create a um, a chess piece at say position uh, seven one, whichever that's going to be, uh, it's going to be creating a pawn. So that'll 
that'll work exactly the same as a chess piece at the moment. Uh, it has no code in any events or anything like that. Uh, the game will look identical to what it did before, but that's not really what's important. So uh, I'm going to do that exact same thing for a bunch of other pieces. I'm just going to copy that five times. One, two, three, four, five. And um, I'm going to name them in no particular order. Knight, Bishop, uh, what's that, Rook, or Castle, depending on where you live in the world, uh, Queen, and of course, King. So now we have, um, in addition to uh, well, in addition to your default chess piece, uh, six pieces, and that, those represent all the types of pieces on the board. And as of this moment, they all do the same thing. Uh, it's not particularly, um, they're not particularly useful to be there. They just exist, and you can do stuff with them. However, you may uh, remember in this uh, in this uh, chess piece spread that I have. In addition to the pawn um, image, there's also a bishop, a knight, a rook, a king, and a queen in some order because I am an idiot and I can't tell the queen and the king apart, apparently. <clears throat> so, uh, there's one thing that's going to be um, different in each in each um, piece, uh, and that'll be the sprite index. So, where am I? Uh, that is not a sprite. This is um, that, that, that is a sprite. I'm sorry, I'm looking for an object. So... You could, if you wanted to, in the create event, tell um, each piece that it's uh, Im no, I can't spell image index. I can't spell. We've been over this already. Equals um, what's that? That's a pawn, so it's going to be zero. And say in the night create event code image index equals uh, one, because I think that's uh, where the night is. I should probably leave um this open like in Windows uh picture viewer or something so I can look at it while typing. Uh, the knight is 2. Alright, so that's, um, you yeah, the knight, the imaging deck is going to be 2. However, if you are familiar with the way inheritance works in Game Maker, when you make an object a uh, child of another object, uh, if they have, if say the parent object has code in the create event and the child object has code in the create event, the child object's code completely overrides the, um, the, uh, what is it, their code in the parent's create event. So, like for example, the image index, the Im image speed did not get sent to zero here. Uh, color didn't get initialized, and if this was a white chess piece, the game would have crashed. I'm going to demonstrate that real quick. Um, going to go into that's chess piece pawn. I don't really care. Uh, board. I'm going to create a uh, say a knight on uh, that side of the on the board, and the game is going to crash because um, the create event has been overridden. Uh, that's the technical term for overridden. And um, the variable color has never been initialized, and uh, the game doesn't know what to do with that now. So instead of um, whoa, to get around that in each in each individual create event, you could use inherited event inherited, and that'll um, that'll run the code in uh, the parent object chess pieces uh, create event, and then this. So uh, you'll have your image speed equals zero, and you'll have your variable color equals white, and all that fun stuff. But I'm going to um, put that to the Windows clipboard for a minute, but that's tedious. I don't like typing once again. Um, if there's a way that you can do something with less typing that'll have the exact same result, do it. So instead of using the create event, I'm going to go into the generic chess piece. I'm going to tell each chess piece to run um, event perform event uh, ev other, that's it, and ev user zero. So I think a lot of people know about this, but most people don't use it. Uh, most people I've talked to don't use this, but when you go into other, you have this thing called user defined, and user one through user uh, defined one through zero, one through zero, zero through fifteen. And this is basically just a dumping ground for a lot of code. If you want to do something like this, have a bunch of objects with uh, that like extend each other and have maybe one similar property instead of like overriding each event where that happens, you can just tell it to run uh, user find one or two or three or whatever, and um, you only have to modify one of it, and you don't have to do event inherited and all that other crazy stuff. So here's where I'm going to say um, image index. What is this? This is a knight. So image index equals two. Um, I don't I don't know why. Oh my god, computer lag. I don't know why a lot of people don't seem to use um, event inherited much. Like I'm the only person I know that does that. Um, or that 
does it frequently anyway. So let's see, where do I, um, I just dealt with a pawn, didn't I? No, I didn't de deal with the pawn. So I'm just going to um, be lazy and change this to a uh, user zero. And now we're going to do this exact same thing. I'm just going to be assigning the um, image index uh, for the each individual piece, in each individual piece, and I'm going to edit that out because it's all the same. I don't really have to narrate it, I hope. Okay, perfect. So um, I have a couple of on the board. They should be drawn perfectly fine. For example, you see a knight there and a, uh, another pawn there, and you don't really make a difference because the default appearance of chess pieces is just a pawn. Maybe I should make them invisible so you can tell them apart from pawns, but <clears throat> that's not important. So uh, I might as well put them on the board now. So right now in the board create event, uh, you want rooks on the corners, uh, so that'll be um, there and there, and on this side, uh, where is it? There and um, there. And instead of manually typing out all these, I'm just going to copy and paste this from my um, original chess tutorial file because I don't. That'll be quicker, and I don't want to waste time because time is not something that you want to waste. So objects, ignore it, please. Okay, perfect. So I have um, all the pieces aligned where they're supposed to be pawns, rooks, knights, bishops, queens, kings, whatever. And when you hit the game... <clears throat> Alright, so, uh, finally, something that resembles a chessboard. So, yeah. I'm not exactly sure the order of the king and the queen because I haven't played chess actually in um, probably over a year now. And I know that there is some rules uh, that tells you which um, where the queen and the king are supposed to be in relation to the, uh, the left black square and the board orientation and all that, but I don't really know that. Uh, if you want, you could pretend the red square is black, and or the, the red square is right, and the white square is red, and I don't... Uh, when you're making this game a little bit more complicated than I am for the purposes of this tutorial, you can go and deal with that, but whatever. Um, how long have I been recording? I've been recording 15 minutes. Um, I suppose uh, that's a decent length for video, and this is a, um, a decent stopping point with a game more or less resembling the chessboard, so I'm going to be cutting off here. Um, this is going to continue in the next part of the tutorial, so you can just go to the top of the video screen here and um, click on the annotation link to that If um, whenever I get around to uploading that. So uh, for now, I hope you all enjoyed that and found it useful and maybe learned something about object inheritance and game maker. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe, watch some other stuff I've uploaded, and I will see you later.